Bon a locale, my garden of roses. There is a lot of debate and argument going on right now over Donald Trump and the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA program. With the president coming out with a plan to offer 1.8 million unauthorized immigrants, or dreamers as they've been called, a pathway to citizenship over the span of 10 to 12 years. While the average Democrat might see this as caving on the DACA issue, this couldn't be further from the truth. Donald Trump is using his negotiating prowess to put Chuck Schumer in a very tight corner after he had taken Trump's wall off the table. It also comes with the expectation that the green card lottery program would be done away with and family-based immigration would be severely restricted a plan that would likely reduce the number of immigrants which move to the United States annually by half and puts a lot of Democrats with large Hispanic voter bases who have family members who are still on residency or undocumented immigrant status in a, lot of, in a very tight position. But this is more than just negotiating on the number of immigrants allowed to gain citizenship due to their parents entering the country. And Chuck Schumer knows, as the president treated on, on Wednesday, that there is no, if there is no wall, there is no DACA. For a, predominantly Hispanic counties in the United States, there is no more important issue than DACA. What would happen if Chuck Schumer kept trying to play hardball with the wall until the deadline for DACA, March 5th? Well, deportations would begin, and Democrats desperate to keep their voter support in Hispanic-majority congressional districts would have no choice but to turn on Chuck Schumer's plans and start supporting Trump's plan for a wall in order to stop those deputations from their voter base and their voter base's families. The president knows what he's doing. By forcing DACA and the wall to be intrinsically tied together in legislation, just after so many Democrats have voted against transparency within the government regarding the release the memo controversy, as well as them voting against the best tax reform package since the early days of Reagan, these Democrats would be throwing away their chances in the midterm elections and the support of their voter base if they voted against the wall and did away with DACA in the process. By demanding the removal of the green card lottery program, as well as severely restricting chain immigration, or the process of moving one's family into the country after one has gotten a green card, the president only further seals the deal. Each year we accept 50,000 individuals on the green card lottery program, but the number of immigrants who come into the country ends up amounting to more than 200,000 per year. And while these restrictions would not end it entirely, analysts are sure that this would reduce that number by half. In addition, the amount of time it would take most immigrants to gain citizenship would be in the ballpark of 10 years, meaning that these immigrants would not have any large effect on elections at any point during the president's tenure. Between this and the powerful tax reform package passed in December, the president is doing exactly what he wants to do without sacrificing very much at all. He's reducing immigration. He's fixing a severely corrupt loophole in the American immigration process. He's keeping the ball in his court. He's improving the economy for Americans and Americans primarily. And he gets that campaign promise, which seemed like such a pipe dream to Democrats two years ago, the Southern border wall. This doesn't mean it won't be a continuing hard fight for the president and his administration. Cries of racism and holding the dreamers hostage for 25 billion have already been heard from Democrats in high Hispanic population areas. But the Democrats don't actually hold the cards here. As the weeks continue, we're going to be seeing more and more Democrats desperate to maintain the populations of their congressional districts, immigrant or otherwise, turning against Chuck Schumer's terrible negotiating tactics and supporting the president's plan. The president absolutely knows what he's doing with this, and I highly doubt he's going to get a deal that he considers unfair for the American public. 1.8 million immigrants does seem like a lot until you recognize that that is 1.8 million over the span of 10 to 12 years. 
That's a much smaller number than you realize because that's more along the lines of 180,000 per year at most. Uh, these people aren't going to be all suddenly given their green cards at once. They're going to have to go through the process just like absolutely everyone else who wants to enter the country does. And if they don't, well, they're going to be subject to immigration and deportation laws, as so many others are going to be in March regardless. We have about 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States, especially in states like Texas and California and Arizona. States with large electoral uh, influence, mind you. And while California is going to be a very hard sell with uh, the laws passed basically forcing California-based companies to uh, fight against immigration and customs enforcement uh, to prevent them from investigating undocumented immigrants and the uh, idea of sanctuary states, which is a very hotly contested issue right now, Places like Texas are only going to grow because Texas has one of the lowest uh, uh, state tax rates, income tax rates in the country. And if you add on to that the greatly reduced income tax rates from the tax bill, that uh, uh, the tax package that Donald Trump presented and got passed, you're going to see a lot of people moving to Texas specifically for the fact that they might be able to get a construction job on this wall. And this wall isn't going to be built by foreigners. He almost has no choice but to hire entirely American. And for a job this size, we're looking at a good 250,000 jobs along the length of Mexico's border shared with the United States. As people move into a lower tax bracket by moving from one, one high taxing state to a lower taxing state like Texas or Arizona, we're then going to be seeing people having more of their own money. We're going to see people using that money in the American economy and further growth from it. The fact of the matter is this wall is going to be a huge boon to the country even if people want to declare it racist or something along those lines. And despite the fact that Mexico isn't paying for the wall, which I don't think is off the table yet, a lot of people are, you know, laughing at that idea, including the president of Mexico, who has clearly stated we won't help pay for it, except Mexico isn't in that great of a position, considering the amount of international crimes that occur within Mexico, such as the distribution of severe drugs like fentanyl and uh, cocaine coming out of Mexico into the United States, into Europe. More and more, these people who think that they can just dismiss Donald Trump's negotiating tactics and ability are finding themselves backed into a corner by their complete lack of willingness to actually negotiate. Chuck Schumer sees this. He sees this loud and clear right now because when he took the wall off the table, he also took the ability for DACA to be renewed off the table. Chuck Schumer had no idea what he was doing when he made that choice because he thought he had something in his pocket that he could take away from the president and get whatever he wanted. And instead, he's giving, the, he's giving him a little bit over half of what he wanted, with the exception that the Democrats lose the green card lottery, they lose chain immigration policies. Really, the Democrats are losing more than they gain through this process, and none of them seem to want to accept that fact. They mostly just want to cry racist. They mostly just want to laugh at this publicly for the sake of their constituency. But that laughter and those cries of racism are having less and less an effect as time goes on. Eventually, these people are going to have to negotiate because they don't have the votes to win on their own. 
They need Republicans to pass DACA. They need Republicans to support immigration. And they can't get that unless they give Trump his wall. Thank you for watching. This has been, uh, I wrote this one out a little with a little bit more detail instead of just taking notes from different stories because there's a lot of depth to this one that I really feel like a lot of people are missing. And if you like it when I, I start out with about five minutes of written speech and then move into five minutes of talking off the cuff, do let me know in the comments below. And of course, let me know what you think of anything in the comments of my videos so that I can respond to them on my Saturday show, which will always start now with a segment in which I am responding to comments from videos, showing them on screen, reading them off, and giving my thoughts on the matter for a few minutes before moving on to the next comments. And as I've been forgetting to say, bonsoir, mon chéris. Mm -hmm.